Good morning, dear students. I hope you are all uh, fine. And uh, welcome back to school. I'm Ms. Lima Kiki, and today is 14th of September 2020. Is in English for starters uh, for 10th grade, and uh, we are going to talk, to talk about a lesson in students' book. And our lesson today is Unit 1 about culture, and we have two main questions. We are what we eat, what do you eat, and do you eat healthy food? So our lesson is going to be about food and eating. The objectives of our lesson are talk about food around the world, talk about simple past and past continuous, and listen to new words including A and E. Let's begin our lesson by asking some questions. I want you to think of them after looking at these pictures. As we can see, we are seeing uh, a family eating all around the world. And my question for you is, which is your favorite meal of the day? We have three meals in the day. We have breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Which is your favorite meal? For me, it is lunch, because it's more delicious than other meals, and it uh, has a lot of variety of dishes. B, how many other meals or snacks do you have in a typical day? Between meals, do you have some chips, biscuits, juice, fruit? What other typical snacks do you have? You can ask your friend and your friend can answer you. Okay. Let's see these pictures about food. I want you to know the name of this food. First of all, we have tabula. This is a dish, a dish of tabula. Noodle soup, which one? Yes, this one. Roast turkey, this one. And pizza, all of us know pizza. Yabrak, this one. And barbecue, also this one. Tagine, this one. And the last one, baila, this one. We have sushi, and the last one is baila. I want you to match between the food and its countries, where it is from. Let's begin with tabula. Where do you think? We have Syria, Tunisia, Algeria, England, Japan, Italy, Spain, China, Lebanon, and Australia. What do you think? Also, noodle soup. Roast turkey, pizza, yabrak, sushi, barbecue, tagine, and baila. Think and match them. Let's see the answers. We have tabula, it is from Lebanon. And noodle soup, it is from China. Roast turkey, it is for Australia. Pizza is from Italy, Yabrak, it is from Syria, and uh, sushi from Japan, and we have barbecue from England, also we have tagine from Tunisia, and the last one, baila, is from Spain. It, it is from Spain. Okay. Here, also, we have some breakfast around the, uh, the world. You are going to hear a talk about what people in different countries eat and drink for breakfast. I want you to look at these pictures here. We have 11 pictures of food, photos of food. And I want you to match between its names, its names and the picture. Before we listen, find out what other students around the world had for their breakfast. Let's match them. We have here some food. They are babula. You can know them. Let's match them. Okay. First of all, we have beans. Which one? This is. This is beans. And the second one, cereal, it is number two. 
The third one, cheese. Which one? Cheese. They are seven. The fourth one, crescent. Crescent. It is five. Crescent. And here we have egg. It is number four. Fish. Number one. Noodles. It is 11. And onion. This is number six. Rice. Number three. Toast. Number 10. This one. And you get number nine. Okay. So this is fish. Cereal. Rice. Eggs. Croissant. Onion. Cheese. Beans. You get toast and noodles. To answer these questions with a partner, with your friend, which other countries breakfast is most similar to breakfast in Syria? What do you think? In Syria, we have falafel, hummus, a cheese. Which country do you think is most similar to Syria in breakfast, at breakfast time? What do you think? I think it is Lebanon. It is Lebanon. Perhaps Jordan, also similar to us. Which of these foods do you know? The food we have uh, seen, I know all of them. They are babula, all of them. And which would you like to try? For me, I would like to try fish at breakfast, at breakfast time. I want to try fish at breakfast time. Okay. The next one, I want from you to look at these questions and then we are going to hear a sound about these questions uh, they are about food about, uh, all around the world. First of all, I will uh, read for you these questions, prepare them, and then we will listen to, to the sound. First of all, which three, three drinks are mentioned as part of a continental breakfast? Second, where does the speaker say a continental breakfast is babula? C, what are some babula breakfast dishes in Syria? D, what is the Egyptian meal, full mudammas? And E, which far eastern country does the speaker talk about? And what is unusual about breakfast in this country? F, what do most Russians drink at breakfast time? And G, what do children particularly enjoy eating in Russia? After preparing these questions, I want from you to hear a voice or a sound Side one, o one, culture. Side one, o one, culture. Unit one, we are what we eat. Page eleven, exercise three C, one point one. Listen and note which kinds of food in the list the speaker mentions. Today. We're going to look at what people in different parts of the world eat for their first meal of the day. Breakfast. You'll be amazed at the variety. Let's start with Western Europe. In countries like France, Italy and Belgium, most people start the day with a continental breakfast. This is coffee, black or white, and bread, often a croissant or toast. Some people drink tea or hot chocolate instead of coffee. Continental breakfast is also popular in North and South America. There are many different types of breakfast food in Africa. In many parts of Africa, breakfast usually includes a thin soup made from rice or corn. People may add peanuts to this. Fresh fruit 
is also popular. In Syria, falafel, hummus, cheese or manoushe are popular breakfast dishes. In Egypt, ful mudammas is the traditional early morning meal. This is made of dried beans and lentils with eggs, tomatoes and onions. In many Far Eastern countries, for example China, people's breakfast is very similar to their other meals, lunch and dinner. This is mainly rice with meat or fish and a few vegetables. The Chinese drink tea all day, but not usually with meals. In Russia, hot tea is more popular than coffee at breakfast time. Russians eat different kinds of bread, often with sausages and fried eggs. Children like cereal, which they eat with a soft white cheese and sugar. These are just a few of the different foods people across the world eat for breakfast. Which of these foods do you know? Which would you like to try? Side one. I want uh, to clear something for you. Continental breakfast, this is a new word, is a light morning meal. It is a light morning meal. It's served buffet style and it typically has fewer offerings than a traditional breakfast at a restaurant. Normally, it consists of bread products, fruit, fruit juice, and tea, like this. It is a light morning meal. Okay. So, we have, uh, we have listened to the voice, and he talks about Western Europe, it contains Italy, France, Belgium, and he also talks about Africa and about Syria and about Egypt and about what? About China. China and Russia. Okay. I want you to answer the questions which three drinks are mentioned as part of a continental breakfast? Three drinks they are coffee black or white, and tea, and hot chocolate. They are three drinks mentioned as part of continental breakfast. And the second question, where does the speaker say a continental breakfast is popular? As we have seen in the map, it is popular in Western Europe like France, Italy, and Belgium, and also, he said, in North and South America. C. What are some popular breakfast dishes in Syria? What do we have in Syria for breakfast? We have falafel, we have hummus, we have cheese, and manoushe. And the fourth question, what is the Egyptian full mudammas? It is not like in Syria. It contains, this is made of dried beans, lentils, fried eggs, tomatoes, and also with onions. So it is not like us, full mudamas in Syria. Okay, I will continue the questions. Here, which far eastern country does the speaker talk about and what is unusual about breakfast time in this country? The far eastern country, it is China. And what is unusual about breakfast in this country, uh, breakfast is similar to other meals. They have uh, on breakfast time, what they have on lunch and on dinner. So they are similar. They have fish and some meat and rice and uh, a few vegetables. And they have it on lunch and on dinner. F, what do most Russians drink at breakfast time? They drink hot tea. And the last question, what do children particularly enjoy eating in Russia? What do they particularly enjoy eating in Russia? Children, they enjoy it. Uh, cereal with soft white cheese and they add sugar, with sugar. Okay, 
These are the questions about the voice we have uh, listened to. Side one. And I have a question for you. Work in peers or groups and answer these questions. How important are meal times in your family? How important are meal times in your family? Do you gather on breakfast time, on dinner time, on lunch time? Is it important in your family to gather? All together to sit at one table and have one, uh, one meal? Yes or no? And the second one, when do you have special meals? When do we have special meals? We have special meals perhaps uh, on Fridays perhaps on birthday parties, perhaps on eats, or on holidays. So we have a big special meals, and we have a variety of dishes on these days. This is the end of the listening. And now we are going to talk about grammar, past simple and past continuous tenses. It is also an activity book, page uh, 81 and 83. I want you to, after listening to this breakfast time story, to answer these two questions. The first question, why did the speaker go to the shop? And B, what happened at home while he was at the shop? I want you to listen and answer. 1.2 Listen to this breakfast time story and answer these questions. Last week was a school holiday, so I woke up late every day. This morning, when I got up, my parents and my brothers and sisters were having breakfast. My mother and father were talking, and my brothers and sisters were drinking tea and eating bread and cheese. My mother made me some tea. There's no bread left, my mum said. Can you go to the shop to get some? Sure, Mum, I said, and ran out of the house. I was hungry. I bought the last loaf of bread in the shop, paid and left. While I was walking home, I met two of my neighbours. They were standing and chatting. Hi, one of them said. You're in a hurry. I'm hungry, I explained. I came to buy some bread. I got back home. There was no one at the table. I sat down, cut a piece of bread, and reached for the cheese. I couldn't believe it. It was all gone. Okay. After listening, what are the answers? Why did the speaker go to the shop? Why did this young man go to the shop? Because there is no bread left, and he has gone to the shop to bring some bread. And what happened at home while he was at the shop at breakfast time? His family ate everything and there was nothing left. He didn't find anything at the table. Okay. Let's talk about uh, past symbol. In grammar, we must know about tenses. Uh, two main things. The first one about its form and the second one about its usage. The first one, past symbol form in statements, for regular verbs, we use the base form and with ed at the end, with all the pronouns, like I walked to school, he walked to school. So the main verb walk, we add ed. Irregular verbs do not follow this rule. She caught the bus to school. He drank three cups of coffee. There is a list of irregular verbs on page uh, 95 and 96. You can see them. We have a lot of irregular verbs in English, and also we have many regular verbs. In negative statements, we use didn't, with the best form to make negative statements. So, in negative statements, we say, I didn't walk to school, and this is the best form of walk. Uh, I didn't walk to school, and she didn't catch the bus. Also, catch is the best form of Caught. Caught is the second and third form. In questions and short answers, also we use the auxiliary verb did with the best form with the questions and short answers. 
Like, did you walk to school? Did you walk to school? The answer is going to be short because we don't have here a question word. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. That's enough. The subject and the auxiliary verb did. Or no, I didn't. No, I didn't. We must put not with no. Where do we use it and its meaning? We use the past symbol for completed past actions. Completed past actions. Like, I walked to school this morning. I walked to school this morning. Completed past actions. Okay. The second one, we have past continuous. And its form for statements, questions, and negative forms. We use the past symbol of the verb to be. Verb to be, we have with he, she, it, we have was. And with the, the, rest, the rest, like I, you, we, and they, we have where. Uh, so, the, with the past symbol, the past symbol of the verb be, with the ing form of the statements, questions, and negative. Let's see some questions or uh, some examples about statements. My neighbors were chatting in the street. So we use the past symbol of the verb uh, to be and the main verb we add ing. We were chatting. In questions, we begin with question word. What were you doing yesterday afternoon? What were you doing? We put the symbol past of the verb to be and then the subject and then the main verb adding ing. And in negative forms, the same, the same past uh, symbol of the verb to be, but we add not. So we say, I wasn't watching TV. He wasn't watching TV. They weren't watching TV. In short answers, also, were you watching TV? Were you watching TV? Yes, we were. Yes, we were. Or, no, we weren't. Again, not with no. And was he playing football? Was he playing football? Yes, he was. Or, no, he wasn't. How can we make ing forms? To make ing form, we add ing to the base form, like watch, it becomes watching, work, it becomes working, and we take e, we take e of the base form and add ing, like live or live, sorry, live, here we have e at the end, so we Cancel it and then add ing. It becomes living. Also cycle. Here we have e. We cancel it and then add ing. Cycling. And if we have a, a vowel sound before the consonant, we double the final consonant and add ing. Like here, chat. A is a vowel and T is a consonant. So we double the consonant and add ing. Chat, it is a chatting. Travel, also it is a vowel and then we have a consonant. We double the L and add ing. Travel, traveling. Where do we use uh, the bus continuous for? First of all, activities which started before the main action. Activities which started before the main action. Like when I woke up, when I woke up, it was raining. So it was raining, then I woke up. This is the main action, and this one was before. I saw an accident while I was walking to school. I saw an accident while I was walking to school. Also, the first one, I was walking to school, and then I saw an accident. Also, the second main uses of uh, past continuous is when we have past actions or events in progress. When we have past actions or events in progress, like we were watching TV at 10 o'clock yesterday. We were watching TV at 10 o'clock yesterday. Okay. Now, after, after this, I want you to read this 
extract about the voice we have listened to and to try to answer or to correct the verbs between brackets after reading it. I will read it for you. Last week we have the verb to be was or where a school holiday. So I wake up late every day. This morning when I get up, my family have breakfast. My mother and father talk and my brothers and sisters drink tea and eat bread and cheese. My mother make me some tea. I buy the last loaf of bread in the shop, pay and leave while, we have while and after while, the main verb is in past continuous. While I walk home, I meet two of my neighbors, they stand and chat. This is the extract I want you to try to correct the verbs between brackets while you are listening to the story. While you are listening to the story. Correct them. Page 12. Exercise 1. 1 1.2. Listen to this breakfast time story and answer these questions. Last week was a school holiday, so I woke up late every day. This morning, when I got up, my parents and my brothers and sisters were having breakfast. My mother and father were talking, and my brothers and sisters were drinking tea and eating bread and cheese. My mother made me some tea. There's no bread left, my mum said. Can you go to the shop to get some? Sure, mum, I said, and ran out of the house. I was hungry. I bought the last loaf of bread in the shop, paid and left. While I was walking home, I met two of my neighbours. They were standing and chatting. Hi, one of them said. You're in a hurry. I'm hungry, I explained. I came to buy some bread. I got back home. There was no one at the table. I sat down, cut a piece of bread and reached for the cheese. I couldn't believe it. It was all gone. Okay, after listening, I want to do this exercise exercise with you. First of all, last week be a school holiday. In the simple past we use either was or where. So the correct answer is was. Last week was a school holiday. So I wake up late every day. This is a past action. So also we say walk. I woke up late every day. This morning, this morning, when I get up, also it becomes got in the past symbol and it is irregular like walk. It is irregular verb. My family have breakfast. My family, it is one family, so, and they are the verb was in progress, so we put it in past continuous. My family was, it is singular, and the verb have, we have E at the end, we cancel it and then add ING. My family was having breakfast. My mother and father, they are two, they are two. So, we put was or where, sure we put where, and the main verb talk, it becomes talking. They were talking, and my brothers and sisters also, they are group, they were or was, they were. They were drinking, also we add ing, drinking tea, and we can say we're eating or eating. Bread and cheese. My mother make me some tea. It is a past action, so we say made. Also, it is irregular. Made, irregular. 
I buy the last loaf of bread in the shop. A past action and uh, buy it becomes bought. Also, irregular verb. I bought the last loaf of bread in the shop. Buy and leave. Buy and leave. They are also in the past. So we say, bed. It is not regular, it is irregular. Bed. And leave also, it is irregular, it becomes left. And left. While, here we have while it combines between two main sentences. One of them is, was in progress and the other is a past action. So here we say, after a while I was walking. Also we add ing. I was walking home. I met two of my neighbors. I met two of my neighbors. It is irregular verb. The last one. They stand and chat. What were they doing? They were in progress. They were ch standing and chatting. So it is in vast continuous. They were standing and chatting. It means talking in a friendly way. Talking in a friendly way. So this is about simple past and past continuous. I hope you have understood it. And the last one. The last one. I want you page 12. To work in beers or groups, talk about what these people were doing at 10 o'clock yesterday morning. What they were doing at 10 o'clock yesterday morning. You may have to use your imagination to make a guess. Make a guess. What was your mother doing at 10 o'clock yesterday morning? What was your mother doing at 10 o'clock yesterday morning? Perhaps she was cooking or she was preparing breakfast. Try to use your imagination. We have four main questions. What were or what was your mother or father doing? The, B, what was one of your brothers or sisters doing? C, what was one of your teachers doing? And D, what was your friend doing? Think and make an answer. Okay. I have some answers for you. My father was having breakfast. My father was having breakfast. It is past continuous because at this time, at 10 o'clock yesterday morning, it was, this verb was in or this action was in progress. So my father was having breakfast. My brother or sister was driving his car. He was driving his car. See, my teacher was teaching a lesson. Yesterday morning, because it was Sunday, we have a school and she was teaching a lesson. And the last one, my friend was playing basketball. My friend was playing, playing basketball. It is also in progress. Okay. At the end, here we have to learn some pronunciation about and to differentiate between E and or A. E or A. Before we listen, we must choose between these words. What does he spell? What is he spelling? Is he going to spell lift or left? Lift, it means elevator, and left, it is opposite of right. Eat or eat, big or big, thin or ten, win or win, sit or set. 
Listen carefully and then we will choose the word. Page 12, exercise 4, 1.3. Listen and choose which word you hear. A. Left, left. B. Eight, eight. C. Big, big. D. Ten, ten. E. When, when. F. Sit, sit. Okay. Let's listen again and then we will choose the correct word, me and you. Let's listen. Page exercise 4. 1.3. Listen and choose which word you hear. A. Left, left. So it is left. It is correct. B. Eight, eight. Also, this one is correct. R, A. C. Big, big. C, big. D. Ten, D, ten. Ten. E. E. When, this one, when. Also correct. F. Sit, sit. And the last one was correct also. It is sit. So all our choices were correct. Okay, the last one. Page 12. Last exercise. I want you to listen and repeat the words in sentences, not alone, Page 12, exercise 5, 1.4. Now listen and repeat the words in sentences. A. There was no bread left. There is no bread left. B. My brother ate the rice. My brother ate the rice. C. Lunch is not usually a big meal. Lunch is not usually a big D. meal. D. Ten people came to dinner. Ten people came e. to dinner. E. When do you have breakfast? When do you have breakfast? F. Let's sit outside the cafe. Let's sit outside the cafe. So, at the end of our lesson, you have to differentiate between E and A. And now I want to say to you goodbye and see you next time.